Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat. Um, chance for me to share some thoughts, some ideas, and some guidance that might assist you in your life, in love, and everything else. The topic today, or I should say, the chat episode today is five, eight, 518 is the episode number. The topic today is Beyond, we, Beyond Me Too, What's Next? And I'll explain what that is, that's about, where I'm coming from, and maybe some things I'm talking about or thinking about. Before I do that, let me, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I talk about this stuff. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find and create balance in love, life, and business. I also help attract amazing relationships. That's another piece of the conversation. Um, and every day for the, sorry, I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's a big part of my work. And this is an ongoing series of talks that started almost two years ago. Actually, the first one started over two years ago, but this is a re... re actually, it's almost two years ago. Called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. Just reflecting on when I started doing these not too long after the election, so it is almost two years ago. So today... <laughs> sorry, I'm just melancholy for a second there. Um, episode 518, and the topic today is... Um, Beyond me to what's next. And let me sort of jump in with this piece. The reason why this topic is up for me right now, so I'm just adjusting the screen height, that's a bit better. I feel like I was sitting down the screen, it's like, let me fill the screen better. Um, I was having a wonderful interview, um, being interviewed on a show called The Rant by a friend of mine, Beth Davis. It'll be airing in next week or two, I think. Um, but it was a really rich conversation, and frankly, we went deep. We went, <laughs> we went really deep. We went to the deep end. It was quite an amazing conversation. But it left me with some lingering thoughts and things I want to share. And this is one of the things we talked about was about Beyond Me Too. And yes, it's going to be the interview with a bunch of other stuff. And it's going to be quite dense. But this might be of use to you now. So I'm, going to get, I'm just thinking how I want to approach this because there's different angles. To put it into context. Me Too as a hashtag, as an explanation, has been, it's been evident for about five, I think it's about five and a half years now it started to go, but it became very evident the last year and a half or so, two years. This topic is an inevitable and required stage of evolution. So I'll put that on the table first. Me Too as a stand, as a movement, as a expression of healing, of release, that's a key word by the way, healing, is something that's shifting our culture because there are many people, mostly women, but not all women, and not all of them are women, that are expressing their past wounds and hurts by other people, usually men. And there are men who've been harassed by women, and there are men who've been harassed by men, and women are harassed by men as well. So I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I want to be sure I'm inclusive, but I also want to speak to the majority because it's not all, but it's majority. So it's not a global assumption I'm making here. For those of you know, we're not being, you know what that means. It's a statement about the majority pronouns in this conversation. So a lot of people, particularly women, are stepping up, stepping out, speaking up, speaking out about their vi about violations they've had to deal with by men in their past history. Sometimes way back when their childhood, but certainly in the context of power, control, and sex, which is really what it's about. Men who think they can do whatever they want because they have power or control because they hire you or they have employment, or they have rights over you and think they can run you into the ground and use you for whatever they want is one of the examples. So that's the Me Too in a nutshell, in a very, very uh, broad strokes. That's really what Me Too is about, is the chance to express and voice against the people who hurt you or who wounded you and out them so they can ideally become, be dealt some justice. That's not working so well in some areas, I'm very aware, but I want to speak that up. Um, no, I'm not going to go there. That was that's that was the interview. That can stay in the interview. We had not we had to talk about something else in the interview. You can go listen to the replay and I'll announce that and post it on here when I do have it, but I want you to be aware of it because it's we got juicy. Anyway, leave it at that. So beyond me too. The limitation, and I say this clearly, the limitation of me too um, declarations is there are no next steps provided automatically. Now, people are coming up with ideas, and I'm speaking to that myself, about what happens beyond that. Because for those of you, particularly the women who are carrying wounds from your past assaults, insults, abuse, harassments, etc., 
if you don't make peace with those, if you don't release them, if you don't heal them, they're going to be carrying around. You'll be carrying around them, carrying around them like heavy weights. They're going to burden you down in everything you do, whether it's relationships, business, life itself, health, all of those areas. So I want to make sure you get this clear: that you need, if you, if you've, if you have some, if you're someone who has stepped up in the Me Too conversation to express your own wounds and to heal and, and to speak about your past hurts and sufferings, this is for you. You have next steps to do. Yes, having justice dealt is absolutely part of it. But spending your time in resentment, hurt feelings, guilt, woundedness, pain and suffering, one, it's unnecessary and two, requires being dealt with so you can be free to live your life again. It's tempting to stay attached to it, to be righteous about the fact they did that to me and that's why I'm suffering and that's why I'm hurt. That unfortunately gets to wear thin after a while because you're the only one that's suffering. Nobody else is. And so to carry that wound around puts you in the place of being a victim of whatever happened and you never move forward. Part of the next steps and the end, the, the, one of the next steps down the road is freedom, by the way. I'm speaking about the direction of where we're going. But some of the immediate next steps after Me Too, when you come to the place of recognition, ownership, and speaking about it, is to then do some steps which involve healing, working through whatever's in the way that is still like chains around your neck, holding you back because of what happened to Me Too. So beyond Me Too, one of the next steps I recommend highly is to seek counsel or go do some work, some inner work, to rebuild your own self-support structures. Because you've been walking around wounded and carrying around this, um, I can say this, righteous indignation that is really actually the expression of your own suffering because there's no, if you're free, you wouldn't be thinking about it. And so part of the challenge with After Me Too is you feel, may feel a bit lost because you've now expressed the wound, had somebody's, somebody's had justice done to them, great, wonderful, it's all wonderful. However, until you deal with what's still left inside, which is the wreckage experience perhaps or just the pain and suffering whatever you want to call that if you don't deal with it it's going to keep prolonging itself so the wound that they cast on you back, way back when that they've now been caused justice for is still reaping pain inside of you unless you deal with it yes I mean it's very it gets very clear your I'm trying to say this nicely without being too melancholy but this is kind of the trouble with this stuff is that if you want to if you want to have, okay here's the thing delivering justice by expressing me too does not provide you with freedom. It might feel like it might, but it's only temporary. Because whatever happened to you is still inside of you to be dealt with. Because if you dealt with it, you would be free. And that's the key. To get free, you've got to deal with what's inside. Those wounds, the past hurts, those things that were buried in your own experience are still hurting you. They're like um, walking along with a, I'm trying to think of an analogy for this. For example, okay, this is an interesting example. Okay, this, this is a, this is a, this is a, a um, metaphor, kind of, that might describe this. If you are someone who basically, if you walk through a, a bramble bush, if you know what a bramble bush is in England actually, but a bush with thorns on it, that basically the thorns get stuck in your clothes and they're sticking you, and you get to the other side of the bush, you're through the bush, but the thorns you took with you that's stuck in your sweater or your clothing are still sticking you after the event. That's kind of, it's a bad metaphor, but it's kind of what's happening after you go through this experience. You may have gotten free of it by getting through the bush, getting the Me Too, justice served, etc., but you're still carrying the wounds inside. They're still hurting you, and they will not stop until you do something about them. And Me Too is not that solution. It's part of it because it helps you provide a voice to express that, um, what's the word, what's the word I'm looking for? that really is expressing the wound that happened and basically calling to account those who did it to you because they deserve to be called to account. I'm not, no, I'm stopping that. And you've got to take those thorns out that you're still carrying after you went through the bush. I make, yeah, this, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty workable analogy actually because those thorns are going to keep sticking you, hurting you and wounding you forever if you don't do something about them. You may numb them out eventually but they're still in there. So my encouragement, my invitation, my recommendation, your homework, is to start looking at those wounds inside and see what you want to do about them. If you want to get counsel, I can recommend my services. Of course, I'm biased. If you want to do it yourself, you can. There are ways of working on your own. If you want to just stuff them down and bury them, I do not recommend that because it just puts the, it just makes them, those thorns are numb until you move and then you go, ouch, again. You understand my point? So if those wounds are in there, 
you'll be provoked by somebody who puts a similar situation on you and it won't be healthy. So my invitation to you, my recommendation is get some help. Now, one of the things I talked about in my interview with, with uh, Beth was how one of the biggest things that we fail to do when we are feeling righteous indignation, upset, woundedness, up, hurt feelings, being a victim of somebody else's, is, um, somebody else's treatment is we forget to love ourselves. So I, I mentioned, I forget, I, I mentioned actually in the broadcast it's been offered at the end of the interview I'll offer here too is my self-love practice because as simple as it sounds, as ridiculously easy as it might be, well, simple and easy and all the same thing. If you start building up your own self-love, that will help re remove those thorns from your own um, experience and you'll be free to love again and free to love yourself again. But it's tempting for most of us to carry those wounds along forever saying, it's okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry this wound along and it's going to be okay because I, I, I'm paying the price. No, don't have to get free whether it's working with counselor whether it's working with me or somebody else practice self-love you do that in what I recommend in past videos or just get myself a practice I'll leave the links to both of those by the, way, by the way in the comments there's homework to do after you finished outing the person who wounded, wounded you so yes definitely call them to account get the justice you deserve if that can be done but don't do it to the degree where you hurt yourself even more and then do the work to heal those wounds once and for all so you can be free again. That is what's next after Me Too. I think that's it. I, I just share this because, again, if you show me at the beginning, I mentioned um, that my friend Beth Davis interviewed me for her rant uh, radio show or online show, and this came up in the conversation, so I want to share about it here because it's, it's, it's out there. Me Too, especially, especially with the elections coming up again, being a two-year anniversary, a lot of people are feeling that Me Too... Um, trembling feeling so if you're facing that one yourself let's talk um, again put the links in the comments at the end for having a discovery session with me and also my self-love practice it will help you I promise um, but you've got to take the first step so with that I think that's about it yeah with that I thank you for watching by the way I'm, this, this is going to be reposted on YouTube and also on my podcast I'll give you the links for those I knew I forgot something I don't know something else entirely um, so if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time um, with an asterisk. I'll give you that in a second. So Facebook Live first on my personal page, then onto my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Serbia, the author. Then onto my YouTube channel. You can also watch the replay there. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, please, which is Barry Selby. And you can watch the broadcast under Messages from the Masculine playlist. And also eventually onto my podcast. So you look up Messages from the Masculine on iTunes. Please subscribe to that and you can download those broadcasts as well. Um, listen to them when you're driving so you don't have to watch at the screen you can watch them when you're at home and I hope this will be of help to you I keep getting lots of feedback from people that these are valuable so I keep doing them because there's help to be given again I'll put the links in the comments afterwards where you can reach me and also my self-love practice it's worth the investment it's a minimal investment it will change your life um, and I think that's basically it oh yes the asterisk I'm going to be busy the next five days um, and I'm intending to do 5 p.m. Pacific time if I can every day. I'll post on social media when I can if I can't do it then, but I will be doing a broadcast every day to keep my commitment through through the whole thing. Just not sure what time it'll be. Maybe later in the evening. Um, we'll see. Yeah. To be discovered. To be discussed. So right now, my usual time is 5 p.m. Pacific time, which will be next week again. But basically, tomorrow through Tuesday night. Yes, tomorrow through Tuesday night, definitely. May be variable. So bear with me. All right? Um, but you certainly watch the replays. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for being me as, with me as always. Take care of yourself, please. Whether or not this has affected you, please take care of yourself because it's the only way to live life fully and to have what you want. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow at some point, ideally 5 p.m. Watch my page. If you sign, if you watch my, let me say this. If you make sure you're notified about on my personal page, you'll be seeing when I actually go live again because I'll be putting out posts about it. And with that, I thank you for watching. Hi, Corinne. Nice to see you. Sorry, I'm signing off. Watch the replay. Um, I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.